Hi everyone, in this video we'll learn about zero coupon bonds and how to price them in Python. Before we get started, let's review the packages we'll use. These include matplotlib and numpy. Let's start by defining what a zero coupon bond is. A zero coupon bond is a debt security that does not pay any interest. Zero coupon bonds are sold at a discount to their par value. At the zero coupon bond's maturity date, the par value is paid out to the debt holder. The difference between the purchase price of a zero coupon bond and the par value indicates the investor's return. Here we have the formula for a zero coupon bond. In the numerator, we have the par value, and in the denominator, we have one plus the required discount rate for set by the market divided by the frequency. In this case, the frequency can be annual. In that case, the F would be equal to one, semi-annual, F would be equal to two, quarterly or monthly. Then we have that raised to the frequency multiplied by the time to expiration, which is quoted in years. Let's take a look at zero coupon bonds in the market. A popular form of zero coupon bonds are treasury strips. A treasury bond's coupon payments and principal payment, also known as the par value, are separated to create a strip. Strips are backed by the full faith and credit of the US government, meaning the risk of default is very low. Companies can also issue zero coupon bonds. For example, Apple Inc. sold six years zero coupon bonds in Europe back in 2019. However, there is significantly more risk in zero coupon bonds issued by companies because companies are more likely to default on debts compared to countries like the United States. Now that we have an understanding of zero coupon bonds, let's create a Python function to price zero coupon bonds. The way that we do this is we start by calling def, which is going to create our Python function. Then we need to name our Python function. I'll call it zero bond pricer. Then we need to specify the parameters that need to be input in order to price the bond. And we have the parameters listed here. We need to specify the par value, the discount rate that's required by the market, the number of years to expiration or when the bond matures, and finally the compounding period. Next, what I'm going to do is I need to check the kind of compounding period. I want the person that's using this function to type in whether they want annual, semi-annual, or quarterly compounding, even monthly compounding. The way that we'll do this is I'm going to start an if elif statement. I'm going to say if the compounding period input is, then I'm also going to use the dot lower function in case they put a capital at the beginning. And if that's equal to annual, then I'm going to have a compound value equal to one so that when we divide it by the frequency, it's going to be annual. So we divide it by one. And I'm going to do this for a few other periods as well. Then we have our elif statement, meaning it is checking to see if the person input semi-annual, quarterly, or monthly. Then we have the corresponding values. So two, four, and 12 respectively for each of those. Next, what I want to do is I want to actually calculate the value of the bond. I'm going to create a variable called zbond. Then like the formula, I'm going to take the par value and define it by the discount rate. And we need to take the discount rate, we need to divide it by the compound value, then we need to raise the denominator by the compound value multiplied by the number of years. When we do that, we use two asterisks to raise it. Then finally, we want to return the value of the bond itself. So I need to specify return Z bond value. We created our function. Now let's see if we coded it out. What I have here is a coupon bond example. So we're an analyst. We are tasked with pricing a zero coupon bond maturing in 10 years with a par value of $100. The market's discount rate is 5% and the portfolio manager wants us to calculate the bond's value using semi-annual compounding. What I'm going to do is I am going to call on our function, the zero bond pricer. Then I am going to input all of the parameters in here. The first is going to be the par value. So we know that that's 100. Then we need to input the discount rate. It's going to be 5%. In this case, I need to type in 0.05. After that, we need to put in the number of years to expiration, 10. Then finally, I need to input the compound frequency. In this case, we want it as semi-annual. And here we have the value of our bond. This is the estimated value. So if we want to buy a, currently a bond that matures in 10 years with a par value of 100 that is compounded semi-annually and has a 5% discount rate, 
the current bond price would most likely be $61.03 for this zero coupon bond. Let's take a look at a very important variable when considering the zero coupon bond, which is rate sensitive sensitivity. As with other bonds, when interest rates rise, the value of zero coupon bonds fall because investors now require higher payouts. Because zero coupon bonds do not pay, make intermediate coupon payments, they are most sensitive to interest rate changes. They are more sensitive to interest rate changes than coupon paying bonds. Here we have a bond pricer for a regular coupon paying bond. We won't go through this. I will have a separate video that outlines how to value a coupon paying bond for now, but we have our function here to price a coupon paying bond. What I'm going to do next is I am going to use list comprehension. What I want to do is I want to price zero coupon bonds at various interest rates. Let me type it out, then review the code. To explain what's going on here, we have our function to price zero coupon bonds. And the only variable I'm changing is the discount rate. I'm keeping the par value the same, the number of years to expiration the same, and the compound frequency the same at annual. And we can see as the discount rate increases, the value of our bond decreases. What I want to do is I'm going to save this into a list. I'll call this Z bond list. Then what I also want to do is I want to run this same list comprehension for our coupon paying bond keeping all other variables constant besides the discount rate. And we can see that for our coupon paying bond, the only difference is we have the actual coupon payment. But let us graph this out and take a look. And we can see that the value of the zero coupon bond, which is this red line, is significantly less than the coupon paying bond, which makes sense because the coupon paying bond also gives you coupon payments. In this case, it is at 5%, so that's $5 per year. You receive those coupon bonds over those three years, which has significantly more value than a zero coupon bond, which only pays the principal $100 at the maturity date of the bond. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope that this video was helpful. I included additional references that you can check out. Investopedia does a really great job in summarizing financial concepts. You can also feel free to like and subscribe. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn, Twitter, GitHub, and Odyssey. Thanks everyone for watching and happy coding.